know, the tabernacle <clears throat> must have been a very busy place. Remember, this was, at least when Israel started out in the wilderness, there were easily over a million people, and the priesthood had to handle what was required for all those people. So there's a lot of things going on. A lot of sacrifices for sins. You can imagine that many people daily bringing their sacrifices for their sins. Over here we've got a man that he suspects his wife might have been unfaithful and she's going to have to drink a potion of, the, of water and the dust from the floor. And over here we've got some, a couple that are stricken with leprosy. The priest is going to have to examine them and see. We've got people lined up bringing different sorts of animals for sacrifice. And in addition to these for sin, we've got people bringing sacrifices as peace offerings to God. We've got somewhere near there's, there's those that are washing vessels and pots and spoons and forks and basins and flesh hooks to be used in the service. And there's incense ground at times and, and oil being uh, pressed from olives and poured into the lamps. And there's uh, provisions for making the show bread and baking it. And then all this is going on. It's a very busy place in the tabernacle and later on the temple. But now on the Day of Atonement, we're not going to be dealing with one-at-a-time sins. On the Day of Atonement, no more one-at-a-timers. We're going to deal with all the sins of all the people all at one time. Now, does everybody come into the tabernacle then? No. Everyone out. Everyone. Everyone out of the tabernacle. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he, that's the high priest, when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. This is confirmed also in the book of the Hebrews. Into the second, that is the most holy place, went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Now this was a transaction strictly between the high priest and God. Even though this was for the, all the sins of all the people, there were no observers here. There was no one in the tabernacle, as I understand it, not even in the outer court. Everyone was out. They had nothing to do with this. This is a transaction between the high priest who is serving God. He's there to please God. Yeah. He's the one that takes the sacrificial animals. He kills them. He takes their blood and sprinkles it in the appropriate places, including on the mercy seat. He puts the, the animals on the altar. He burns them there. He's the one that sprinkles the blood. He's the one wearing the holy garments. He's the one that does all this with great precision. He's the one that takes the scapegoat and confesses the sins of the people to the head of the scapegoat. He does all this by himself. Now this is all, you know, a shadow of what transpired between God and his Christ. <clears throat> Christ atoned for our sins by himself alone. They were sure there were men around the cross. Men did things to him, as Brother Given and others have brought out in their messages. But this taking away of our sin was a matter strictly between God and Jesus Christ. He bore this burden all by himself. On the cross, there was no one holding him up, no one helping him, no angel came to comfort him there. He bore all our sins in his body on the tree. He gave his life, sacrificed his life, yielded up the ghost, and took our sins away into the land not inhabited, all by himself. <clears throat> now what this means for us is that salvation is sure because we weren't involved in it. No man, no sinner, nothing imperfect and unpure had anything at all to do with this. It was God and his lamb that performed this and accomplished all of this for us. 
Now, as we draw near to this table, we want to know that these things are sure. And oftentimes, I'm sure I'm not alone in this, Satan will try to draw near too. <clears throat> and he'll bring up your sins to you. Remember this? Huh? Remember that? Remember when you said that? Remember? All these things that you, you know, weigh in your past. Things past, things that you regret, things you've sorrowed and wept over, and he'll bring them all up at this time. Well, now you can go to Isaiah chapter 50. Remember that, Isaiah 50. He is near that justifieth me. We draw near to this table. There's, we're not the only ones drawing near. God's drawing near here too because he honors the Son too. And the Son's drawing near. And the Holy Spirit's drawing near. So who will contend with me? Now the devil can't draw near here. He's going to shout at you from the cheap seats. But now you read this in Isaiah 50. Who is near? Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who's mine adversary? Come over here and say that. I'm with the one that justified me. Come stand here and say that. Amen. And he's got to flee away. Amen. He can't do it. Amen. He's not allowed here. Amen. Bless the Lord. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Now, as we draw near to this table, Jesus will draw near <clears throat> And he'll tell you all of his accomplishments for you. And the Father will draw near. And he'll tell you, as we just heard, I'm satisfied. And the Holy Spirit will confirm to you, as the songwriter said, the Spirit answers to the blood and tells me, I am born of God. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but who walk after the Spirit. Amen. Amen.